What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel, and we're doing another uh, Croc Talk podcast kind of thing where we go into some great detail, hanging out with Casper back here behind me about a specific subject. So I just finished uh, doing my underwater gator tours this morning, and we're just hanging out back here with him. There we go, get a good view of his size. Look at that, right? It's a really good idea of how big he is. People don't realize how big Casper is. He's a little bit under 10 feet. He's about 250 pounds. Age is unknown. There's no way to actually know his age, but... Uh, yeah, people don't realize he's, he's a good size alligator. Now, our topic for today's video is alligator immune systems and, uh, you know, how they're able to heal so well, how they sustain injury, things like this. And a lot of people, this is a frequently asked and requested video because a lot of people see a lot of videos of alligators and crocodiles fighting. And the most famous one everybody talks about, uh, there's a situation where a guy is feeding two big crocs, throws a piece of meat, the other croc grabs the other crocodile's leg rips it right off and everybody talks about like how it doesn't even react and you know what that means and why and what happens and so we're going to delve into all that kind of stuff but before i do something i do like to point out in that video is specifically a great example of why i feed gators and crocodiles the way that i do why i do the training that i do because when i do my training i have these guys patiently wait for their food and i have them line up for it um, whether I'm working with gators or crocs, again, I don't get to work with crocs very often because most of the parks I work with don't have them. Um, but you can see plenty of other videos, older ones of me working with crocodiles and doing the same training I do with alligators. And the importance there is doing the training properly where when you feed them, you prevent those kind of situations from arising. Like how I'll have the alligators line up at a specific point and I have them patiently wait for their food. And that way I can hand feed them and make sure I go down the line and nobody grabs anybody on accident. And so people always ask, well, why don't your gators kill each other like I see in the videos? Because I specifically train them in a way to prevent that behavior, okay? Now, back to the whole immune system thing though. So first we'll start with their pain tolerance because this is really fascinating. And this is what most people are most surprised by by watching that video is these guys have an incredible pain tolerance. Now that leads many people to think that they don't feel pain. They absolutely feel pain. Now we are not able to understand exactly what he's feeling. You can't put yourself inside of his mind. So we don't know exactly how they feel, but we do know they're very sensitive to touch. And like I've shown in other videos, they have those little tiny black dots along the face, the integumentary sensory organs. Those have been shown to be 10 times as sensitive as the human fingertip, 10 times as sensitive as your fingers is how sensitive they are to touch. And that's for when they're hunting in murky water, they feel around for the fish and they can grab them. So we know, at least on the face, incredibly sensitive faces. And then when they get into fight, I've seen alligators, oh man, I had one, I did a video about this before. I had one, his top jaw was ripped off right up to the eye, like right up to the eye, ripped off by another alligator and this guy's surviving like imagine what that feels like you know you hit your finger with a hammer and it hurts now imagine your finger is 10 times more sensitive and then it gets ripped right off right so crazy and it's very often to have alligators with jaw injuries because they fight with their jaws and teeth and you know jaws and teeth hitting each other so it's pretty often that we see gators missing part of their jaw or a big scar or missing an eye since their teeth when they're fighting often hit each other in the eye. So all these injuries happen, they absolutely do feel pain, but they don't react to it like we do. Now that's not because they don't feel it, but that's because your pain tolerance is taught to you by your culture you grow up with. I'm gonna say that again. Your pain tolerance is a taught behavior by the culture you grow up with. And he just sunk underneath the water on the move. Now, the reason why I say this is because you will see in other cultures, like let's say I've seen uh, videos of some northern climate tribes where um, they have the kids outside, like babies outside naked playing in the snow and they're laughing and having a great time. And Casper's creeping up over towards me. Look at him, look at him. He's actually got his mouth open underwater. So, um, you know, he's, he's super chill and all, but he's still an alligator. So I got to pay attention right here because he's, he's definitely creeping up a little bit right there. But, um, but anyway, so I'm just gonna keep my eye on him just in case. But, uh, but anyway, so there have been some really cool studies showing this and just like, obviously those children playing in the snow, they are feeling the pain of the snow on them, but they're taught that like, it's an acceptable pain. Just deal with it, you know, just let it go. Pain is in your mind, you know? And uh, it's something that a lot of people do forget and don't realize. And many athletes train to be able to tolerate insane amounts of pain. And it's not that they're, 
special is that they're using their brain and they're just, you know, allowing their mind to control their body and uh, to be able to deal with this kind of pain, right? Sorry, I'm kind of messing up what I'm saying right here and not exactly speaking in the best way because I'm trying to focus on him. The thing is that when he goes underneath the water, um, they become much more uh, uh, reliant on touch and using those integumentary sensory organs we were just talking about, which means that he's much more likely to strike out at something that he perceives as possible food underwater, which could be me. So that's why I just lifted him up. I just pulled him up so he's upright and then he's looking at me and he knows it's me. So that's why I want him to be up here and uh, checking me out just to make sure he's not going to accidentally think that I'm food and go to bite my legs. That's why I like to pull him up and get him off the bottom right there. When he's on the bottom, it's much more sketchy like that. Anyways, what I was trying to say, pain tolerance is a learned behavior, okay? And uh, in both directions, you can learn to have a very high pain tolerance or you can be taught to be a little wimp and cry about every little thing that happens to you, which unfortunately happens to a lot of people in society these days. So again, learn behavior on pain tolerance. So they have no incentive to cry about every little thing. Alligators live a very painful life in the wild. It is full of hardship. It is full of battles. It's full of pain. And so they have a great incentive to have a high pain tolerance, but it's not that they don't feel the pain, right? So that's why in that video, you see this crocodile get his leg ripped right off and it's like he doesn't even react. Now, I'm sure there's also physiological responses like shock and things like that that prevent them from uh, feeling super traumatic injuries like that, I would imagine, uh, similar to how people do. But again, it's not that they don't feel it or they're not aware, okay? Um, now, when I've seen alligators get into fights with each other, uh, yeah, they can bite each other. You won't even see the other one react. And you know he's in a lot of pain and uh, they, they don't really react to it. Now, get away from that because we're just running in circles on that topic a little bit. But I know people are going to ask a lot about it. Um, let's talk about the healing ability, right? So he does get his leg ripped right off. They can just heal right over. Uh, they don't, now you should consult with a vet all the time you know if you if you have the availability you should always consult with a vet and we do of course um but realistically he's fine on his own because this happens in the wild all the time too it's very common to see wild alligators missing an arm or a leg or half their face or their tail i've seen alligators with zero legs left all four ripped right off they're still in the wild surviving. I've seen gators with a little tiny nub of a tail still left ripped right off. And like I was saying earlier, one with half his face ripped right off. I mean, it is crazy. And like, imagine as a human, like if you just lost your thumb out in the mud and the nastiness out in the swamp, and you know, they're living in that nasty mud. Imagine you could just get a gash, you could lose a digit, something like that, infection can set in, and you can die from such a minor injury. Meanwhile, this guy gets like, three legs ripped off in the swamp and he just heals over he just survives like it is insane how their immune systems are so powerful to be able to fight infection and there are ongoing studies trying to uh, figure out how to use this to help people you know looking at alligator blood and immune systems and figuring out if we can use that to help people out now they're speaking of their blood their blood also coagulates very very quickly and in fact i've seen alligators where they're bleeding in the blood is going down in the water and then by the time it hits the bottom it's already like jello it's crazy how fast these guys uh can coagulate their blood they can stop bleeding so that way they don't bleed out and die so that's another amazing adaptation that they have so this incredible immune system the ability to coagulate their blood very quickly um it all these things put together i mean they're just insane how these things survive because again you have to imagine that these guys you know, his ancestors lived alongside dinosaurs, literally dinosaurs. Crocodilians are 240 million years old. And so his predecessors were very, very, very similar to what we have today in many aspects. There were some variabilities and offshoots and whatever, but for the most part, the crocodilian body plan has remained relatively the same over millions, hundreds of millions of years. And they've been very successful in this. Now, in Casper's case, he's got battle scars from when he was in the wild. And so if you look at him, look at his arm right here. You can see this bulge right here. So that's a break. So he's got that on both sides. Both of his arms, his front arms were broken and healed up and he can walk on them now. He's had both his arms broken. And uh, you know, he's he's had this since I've known him. So I guess this happened in the wild, but you can see that is a break right there. That's where his arm was snapped and then healed over. And now he walks around on those broken arms that have healed over like it never even happened crazy incredible and then when we look at his osteoderms so the osteoderms if you're not familiar are the ridges on the back right here 
And so each one of these things is called an osteoderm and that's a solid bone formation across the back. Osteoderm literally means bone skin. And what's really cool is those osteoderms are far more dense than the rest of a skeletal structure because your endoskeleton is really a support system for your musculature. Of course, it protects you as well, but it's so you're not a blob. So you can walk around and have some form to you and you're not just a jellyfish, right? So those osteoderms are a subdermal bone formation. So they're not actually part of the endoskeleton. They're not used for support. They are strictly evolved as a defense mechanism. And so because of this, they're far more dense than the rest of the skeletal system. And so if you have like, let's say a python eats an alligator right here in the Everglades, which does happen, and you have like a 16 foot python eat a six foot alligator, they can digest the entire body except for the large nuchal scutes, those uh, osteoderms at the neck are far more dense than the rest of them. And so they can actually uh, pass through the python's digestive system. I'm talking about these ones right here. And so you see how they wiggle too? So again, that's in the skin, not part of the endoskeleton. So imagine you basically throw this thing in a vat of acid Sorry, Casper, but to talk about it, let's say we threw him in a vat of acid, which is the stomach of a python, digest the entire skeletal structure, except for those larger osteoderms that actually pass through because that's how dense they are. Crazy. Now, also to put that in perspective, he's got some of his are broken, actually. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it on video, but he's got some of his osteoderms back here that are cracked open and healed, and that's from fighting. So that really is a testament to how hard they bite down too. In the large alligator biting now with that 2000 PSI jaw force, breaking some of these osteoderms and then they heal over. But those same osteoderms can pass through the digestive tract of a python. Like it's crazy, you know? That's how strong and tough and resilient these guys are. And so even with Casper, if you just look at them, you would never know if you don't know what you're looking for, you'd never know that he's got battle scars because they heal so well. And it's so hard to tell and it doesn't seem to impair him in any way. But yeah, he's got cracked osteoderms. He's got broken legs. I mean, it's nuts. And so these guys, they just heal over, they survive and they keep on going. They keep trucking because that's what crocodilians do. You know, they're incredible survivors. So I think that covers um, a lot of it. Oh, sickness, that was the last thing. Yeah, so people ask me all the time, do they ever get sick? What do you do? Um, they generally don't. I mean, these guys are so resilient. We do work with a great vet, Dr. Mater, and uh, he literally, literally wrote the book on reptile medicine and surgery. And he's been a friend of mine for many years. Uh, so Dr. Doug Mater is the man. He is the guy to talk to. So we're very fortunate we've been able to work with him. Um, but, uh, and he's come and done checkups on Casper and whatnot too. So these guys generally are pretty foolproof. They're pretty bomb proof. They survive just about everything. On occasion, they will have ailments. Uh, on occasion, they can get parasites, um, like a lungworm kind of thing going on. We've seen some weird parasites, very rarely though. Um, and again, they generally don't get sick. Uh, we have had some alligators get West Nile virus, and that is about the only time I've ever seen a gator die uh, from any kind of sickness was a West Nile virus. So that did happen uh, before. So that that's pretty scary. That sucks. Um, there's nothing we could do about that either, though, sadly. Um, and uh, other, I'm trying to think of other sicknesses that can arise. We'll have to do an episode where I have Dr. Mater on here. We were already, I was already talking to him about it and trying to talk about these kind of things so we can go into more detail on that. He knows so much more than I do. So it'd be great to have him try to talk about this too. That'd be a really cool episode to do. Um, but just off the top of my head, uh, generally speaking, these guys almost never really need veterinary care. They just heal over. They just survive just about everything on their own. And that in the background is a peacock. Uh, just FYI, if you haven't heard me talk about them before, they're always in the background making their weird sounds. All right. But um, I'm trying to think of what else we could say about gators. Um, yeah, they just really survive everything, you know? Uh, a lot of people ask me about gator sickness and health and this and that. And I'm like, we generally don't have to do anything. It's very rare that we have to call Dr. Mater. Uh, and these guys, I mean, they're pretty bomb proof, you know? Oh, I'll give you one. So one time we caught uh, a nuisance alligator, you know, a wild alligator that we caught and it came in and it acted completely normal and it was trying to, you know, kill me and everything like they normally do. And then like, I noticed it uh, after like a day, it was definitely being weird. And the other alligators were going up to the base of its tail and like pushing on him and smelling him. And like, it was very weird. And then, you started to smell it too. There was a smell of like rot. And when you looked at him, that gator looked fine. There was nothing visibly wrong with this gator, but there's 
definitely something wrong inside and we had no idea what was going on. And then the skin at the base of the tail started flaking off. And then you could see the white osteoderm, like just bone. You just see exposed bone, no skin, flaking off. And then the smell became overpoweringly, just stink of rot and decay. And we're like, what is wrong with this gator? And then drop dead. This all happened in like maybe 72 hours from like looks perfectly normal right out of the wild to skin falling off, to the other alligators checking him out and knowing there's something wrong with him. And then this awful, horrid smell and then dead. That was the craziest thing I've ever seen happen with an alligator. And um, we tried asking Dr. Mater, he had no idea, we had no idea. And it's the only time I've ever seen that happen. So that is the weirdest health thing I've ever seen happen with an alligator. Super strange and bizarre. The only theories that I was coming up with is maybe right before he was caught, maybe he got bit by a rattlesnake and that was the venom inside the tail. Don't know, that doesn't really make sense to me either. That's the only thing I can think of as a possibility, but you would see necrotic tissue at that point, which we didn't see. Um, I have no idea. It was the weirdest thing I ever saw for as far as alligator health goes. So don't know what happened there, but that was definitely a really curious, weird case. And I wish we had some answers for that, but that's definitely the weirdest thing I've seen. Again, otherwise these guys are pretty bomb proof. There's almost always uh, nothing going on with them. They're almost always healthy and they almost never need any sort of vet care or anything like that. So, but again, we work with Dr. Mater if we do need it, but um, I think that covers just about everything I can think of off the top of my head. We'll have to have Mater back here and be able to have him talk about it a little bit more. He knows way more than I do. But anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys. This one's already gone really long, so hopefully some of you guys made it to the end and learned something about the alligators. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you guys next time.